Hi, it's Slater, the science toy maker. If you use shape cut foam for your walk along gliders, you can save time and paper. But how are you going to make the folds? The pattern that shows you how to cut also shows you where to bend. This video will cover four ways to get the folds in the right place, then a section about how to add front weight and adjust the folds once the glider is made. There's a linked web page with lots more detail. The bending methods are measuring and bending, a simple cardboard jig that sandwiches the foam for bending, a more complex two-piece jig for the front than the back, and freehand bending. You can measure for the bends. This is perhaps a doubly useful exercise for students. Measure five millimeters or three sixteenths of an inch from the leading edge. You can use thin cardboard straight edges to make the bends. Or you can make it a hinge with a piece of tape like this. Or you can use a book to make the bends. Be gentle because the foam rips easily. Measure 13 millimeters or half an inch from the back. Remember that when finished, the front will bend down and the back will bend up. You can make a simple cardboard jig. Print out the pattern, no scaling. Rough cut, but fine cut the ends right on the line. Make a couple of tape donuts for the back. I cut a cereal box in the middle of the side to preserve the fold. Line up the dashed fold lines in the pattern exactly with the existing fold in the cardboard. Rough cut and then cut precisely. Rough cut, tape, and cut out the other piece. We have to make folds in this one. Back up with cardboard underneath. Get a straight edge exactly on the dashed lines and press firmly with a ballpoint pen. Push so hard that it might cut the paper. That creates a weak spot in the cardboard for bending. I actually bend the wrong way first, then the other way. This dashed line shows where a slight dihedral bend will be put into the wings. Cut a chunk out of the front. This piece goes on top. These edges at the ends and here should line up. Make a tape hinge, but don't make the tape all the way to the tabs because that could interfere with the foam going in. To use the jig, make sure that these flaps are not bent up. Open and insert a shape cut foam. Getting the foam located into exactly the right place is the most challenging part of this. You can get the foam and cardboard lined up here or turn it over and line up here. Actually making the bends is pretty easy, just by pushing down and bending the jig and the foam. It's just a very slight bend for the dihedral in the middle. Then push these flaps down and pull the foam out gently to avoid tearing. I'm experimenting with gluing part of a paper clip to the jig to help locate the foam more quickly. You can also bend with a two-piece jig, actually three pieces if you count the straight edge, that's more challenging to make, but I think it's easier to use with more consistent results. Building it will be easier if you already understand how it works. There are two simple bends or hinges here. A piece of foam slides against the bend on the left, but the straight edge can only slide to the other bend because it hits these two stops. Then the jig bends the foam against the straight edge. Tape the cardboard strips snugly together on one side only so they still hinge. You make them a little bit too long so that you can cut them even. Tape both sides of a strip on the side, but only to here so this part is free to bend. Cut off the extra. Tape on a handle. Make sure that there's free movement. Cut a little if it rubs here. Cut out a cardboard straight edge. It'll be easier to pick up if you bend a little handle on, the, on one side. 
cut out two squares and fold them in half. These stops for the straight edge have to be taped on very precisely. Push the straight edge not against the left fold, but the fold on the right. Notice that you can still bend it on top. Push the stop against the straight edge and start taping down, but try not to press the tape on the straight edge. Remove the straight edge and press the rest of the tape down. Outlining the shape might help people get the foam in the right place. The jig for bending the back flaps, or elevons, is very similar in use in construction. Just use the different dimensions. Finally, if you're flight savvy, you could make the folds in the foam by eye. They won't look as neat, but they fly just as well. I don't recommend this for beginners, but if you do, at least look at the pattern or an already made glider as you're folding. However you make the folds, you'll need to make sure the angles are correct then adjust the glide. The camber slants down about 30 degrees. The back flaps bend up at least 30 degrees and up to 45 degrees if you're having trouble with diving. Bend just a tiny bit of dihedral into the middle if it's not already there. Launch the glider, holding gently from the back, bent slightly down. If you let go of a glider without front weight, it doesn't glide. So how do you know what to use for the weight and how much? I like a strip of aluminum foil for the front weight. It's too flimsy as a strip, but scrunched and twisted into a wire, it becomes so strong that you can make cool board takeoffs. You can also use other things like paper or wire. If you put too much weight on front, it dives. If you don't put on enough, it stalls. You can cut off weight to make it stop diving. Or you can add tape weight to make it stop stalling. You can also fine tune by bending the front weight forward or backward. It might be a good idea to start out with a ready to fly glider that I send with foam if I just leave the wires tucked under the glider, it stalls severely. But if I bend them out more to the front, then it glides okay. Bending changes the balance point, or center of gravity. Bending back has the same effect as cutting off weight. Bending forward has the same effect as adding weight. You can use this trick no matter what you use for front weight. The best glide is just at the point where there's no stalling or just a little stalling. If you do advanced flying with only your hands providing the updraft, it works a little better if there's no stalling. If you keep having trouble with diving, even when you cut off weight or bend the weight backward, then bend the elevons up more but not much more than 45 degrees, because then they start acting like brakes instead of flaps. If the glider always turns left or right, then bend the opposite side elevon up, but not much more than 45 degrees. If that's not enough, push the other elevon down. I use these very thin copper wires because they don't damage the foam when I pack gliders together. It's from thrown away, recycled, Ordinary electrical cords. Unfortunately, it's a lot of work to strip the insulation off. It's easier if the insulation is warm. You can also use paper weight, but it becomes limp in humid conditions and can interfere with the air unless you bend it like this. So play around and experiment with front weight and adjustments, and soon you'll master the glide. Then this video shows you how to keep them levitated in the air.